Hi guys, this is Heather with Creativity by Heather B. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you a full panel card featuring Lawn Fawn. So it's going to have three different panels on it, all connected in one. So the card closed up, this is the front, and you can see I'm going to go through some of the stamp sets that I'm using. And then once you open it up, you've got the three full panels, so it creates a full scene. Um, I was inspired by Nicole to do this and just so excited to try it. So um, the paper I'm using is Canson watercolor paper because I am going to be using Distress Oxide inks and I'm going to spray some of that. So I want to do some watercolor paper. Canson is actually 9 by 12. So what I did is I cut it at 5 and a half. So it is a little bit larger than an A2 size card, but I wanted to have room for my scene. So I'm going to score it at 4 um, four twice, but I'm going to do that last because when I put my ink on, I don't want it to pull on those seams. And that was a tip that Nicole gave that I definitely um, used and it made it so easy. So the Distress Oxide inks I'm going to be using, I'm going to start with the sand first, which is the walnut, and then I'm going to use uh, Salty Ocean for the ocean and Broken China for the sky. So what I'm doing is I'm going to take some painter's tape and lay it out and I'm using the grids on my, <clears throat> excuse me, on my, on my mat and I'm going to put that on a straight line so that way I have even lines when I'm doing my sand and my water. Now when I do the sky I'm going to do that a little bit different. So I'm going to go ahead and tape it down to my craft mat. This is a Ranger craft mat that I'm using here and I'm just going to take the walnut and I'm not doing it real heavy handed, I'm just kind of doing it smooth because I want the sand to be different shades but a little more on the lighter side. And you'll notice if I tap it off on my craft mat, I'm doing it down in the bottom corner there and I do it in the same place every time. Because this card folds up, I want to make sure that I don't ever move it down where to there's some ink. So every time I stamp with the Distress Inks, I'm going to wipe that up with uh, my Lawn Fawn Chamois and then with a dry towel just to make sure my card does not get ink on the back. So I've got the sand all inked up and then I'm going to wipe that clean. So now that I've got it wiped up, I'm going to move back to my grid and I'm going to lift the tape up. And you're going to see it creates a smooth line. Now one of the things with the painter's tape that is going to come up and then I'm going to kind of cut because I didn't leave in just for time's sake where I was putting it back down. Distress Oxide inks stay wet, so the painter's tape, when you put it back down, it's going to come back up. So you have to get a new piece of tape, whatever, post-it tape, painter's tape, whatever you use. So you'll see it come up there. So I'm going to put a new piece on the top where I'm going to separate my ocean from my sky, and then off camera I will put the new piece of tape on for the to cover up my sand. So I've got everything taped up. So that white part in the center is where I'm going to put my salty ocean. And I'm going to do the exact same thing, um, mostly with a light hand, uh, in a few places maybe a little heavier just to give it some type of dimension and depth. Um, but you'll see I'm always stamping off down into that same corner. So I know exactly where my ink is on my craft mat, so I'm not getting it on my card. And if you've worked with Stress Oxides, which I love them, and one of the things I love is they do stay a little bit wet, but they can be a little more messy, which is why I have my towel there, just so my fingers aren't getting into the ink. And simple as that, I now have my ocean done and my sand, so I'm going to remove my tape and pull it up off of the sand. So now we've got both there. So for my clouds, I wanted to keep with Lawn Fawn products. I do have the My Favorite Things stencil cloud, but I wanted to use Lawn Fawn products. So what I did is I took this, the die puffy clouds from Lawn Fawn and I die cut two of them, different ones, and then I just taped them together with painter's tape. So I kind of created my own stencil. You can see there I was playing around with some of the other Distress Oxides. Um, and I'm going to use this as the way that I create my clouds. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay it down 
and I'm going to take my broken china and I'm just going to go along. Now once I get to the edge there where it's straight on the right, I'm not going to go all the way to that. I'm going to stop and I'm going to move my stencil to another area. So I'm going to show you fairly um, slow down this first line and then I'm going to speed it up so that because you'll still be able to see what I'm doing. This is a great thing to do with your dies. If you've got a die, you can always make stencils out of them. Um, there's so much stuff you can do with your dies, which is great because they are expensive. And as I've said in videos before, I hate to fussy cut. So it's nice to know that I'm getting the extra money out of the, that I'm spending in the dies. So I'm going to go one more line here. And then I decided just on that left side, I just wanted to kind of put a little partial. I didn't want it to look so uniformed and neat. And you can see how great that comes out. So easy. Um, I just created my own die. I'm going to wipe up my craft mat. So I want the ocean and the sand to have that distressed look, but I don't want my sky. So I'm going to cover that up with a sheet of paper and I'm going to use my distressed water bottle sprayer. And I'm going to spray that. And on the sand, the, the walnut, I am going to spray it pretty heavy because I want the sand to have that textured look. And you can see the way it really, I just love the oxide inks. Um, and they continue, I'm gonna take my heat gun to it and the longer it dries, the more um, of that oxide distress that you get. I just love it. And I'm gonna take my heat gun. So now that I've got my background done, I'm going to set that aside and the stamp sets that I'm going to use are the Life is Good, um, or I'm sorry, Life's a Beach, the Upon a Star, Plain and Simple, Yay Kites, and the Dunnan. So the Yay Kites and the Life's a Beach are, those are some older stamp sets. And then the Upon a Star, Plain and Simple, and Dunna, those are some new ones. So Lawn Fun is great because you can combine their stamp sets and you can use them all together as I'm showing you here. So you can really get a lot of use out of your stamps. So I'm using my Misty and I'm not going to show it on film, but I actually am stamping up um, all of these images twice. And I'm using Nina 80 pound cardstock, which is what I use when I uh, am going to be using Copic or Spectrum Nora coloring. So I've got them stamped up and you can see, this is why I love the Misty. You can see I've got some areas there that didn't stamp out. No problem. They're already positioned. All I have to do is re-ink and put it back down again. I'm gonna push, make sure we've got everything and it looks good. So for the coloring, honestly, it took me a long time to color all these images. I am still getting the hang of the coloring and I am kind of mixing with the Copic and the Spectrum Noir. So what I'm gonna show you is just how I did the base of the, tr of the palm tree here. And then I'm going, I just actually completely turned the camera off to finish the rest of the coloring. And I've got the colors there. I think they're E35, E37, and E39, I believe, are the colors that I'm using for the trunk of the palm tree. So I'm going back in with my E39 just to give it a little bit more darkness, and E35 just to come in with that shadowing. Or, I'm sorry, the E39 for the shadowing. Okay, so there's the palm tree finish, and I've got, off camera, I've got all of my things cut and um, colored and die cut as you can see up there in the right hand corner. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to score my panel. So I'm going to score it at four inches and then I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to score it at four inches again. And I was a little worried on how this would crease because honestly I used, um, the first time I tried this I used the um, uh, Strathmore paper and I didn't like the way it creased so I actually because I was going to be using the distress oxides I used the Canson and it creased perfectly. So you'll see now we've got our full seam panel and what I like to do especially if I'm doing a card that has a lot of die cuts or a lot of things going on in it is I like to lay everything out. So that's what I'm going to do now. So I've got two of those planes so I'm going to lay it out and I actually decided to make this a thank you card. So I'm going to just lay out each panel just so I can get an idea. I can move things around and I'm going to speed this up 
so that way you can see just how I'm laying everything out the little bunny and the kite. I had thought about stamping out the kite string. I had already die cut one and I decided that I wanted that dimension so I decided to go ahead and just use the the kite string that I had die cut. And I have to say looking at it on film I actually kind of like the palm tree back over there behind the sandcastle. I didn't when I was putting it together. Part of the reason because I couldn't get the palm tree to to fit where it wasn't coming off the edge of the card. But I end up moving it to that second panel and I actually kind of wish I would have left it over there on the end. Um, when I watched the video back I really liked it over there. So I've got my little shark fins and my starfish and we're going to put our last plane up there. and our little coconuts down by the tree. So after I get my scene set, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a picture of it because if something happens and it gets knocked around, I want to know where it was because my memory is not the best. So now I'm going to just figure out, okay, what's going to have dimension? What do I want to lift up? Oh, actually first I'm using my gel pen, my black gel pen to go over the eyes and then the dots on the coconut. Okay, so now I decide that I want the plane to have some dimension. So I'm using these small um, glue dimension dots. They're not as thick as the large and I'm showing you there next to some 3M, um, 3M foam tape and so I decided to use those because the card is already kind of bulky because it's folded into three but I still wanted it to have some dimension. So I put the plane. The thanks banner I'm actually going to just glue down. I'm not going to give it any dimension so it really looks like it's coming behind the plane. And for that I'm going to use my Nouveau glue pen and I really like this glue. It sticks down really well. Um, it doesn't really make a mess. I, I've really liked using it. So I'm going to put a Lawn Fawn stamp block just to hold that in place until it dries. And one of the coconuts I'm going to give dimension, the other one I'm going to have laying flat. So it looks like one's laying behind the other one. I'm going to put my little fox and my bunny down and I just love this stamp set. I went back and forth on if I wanted to purchase it because I had a hard time seeing any other use for it than just them looking up at a sky. And that was one of the reasons why when I decided I had kind of had this beach scene in my mind, I wanted to use those characters, that, that little fox and the rabbit, because I wanted to have them looking up the plane. Um, I, I kind of started to see there are some other uses for that. I love them looking up at the starry night, but I wanted to, to incorporate them in some other cards. And you'll see there I knocked that third panel. So if I forgot where everything went, which I actually remembered, um, I could have just got my phone. So that's why I take a picture, because I am a bit clumsy. So for the bunny rabbit, I'm going to put her kite string or his kite screen, string, excuse me, and I love the little bird that's next to them. And those are from the Yay Kites. He's looking up so excited to see the kite flying. And put my little bunny down. And now I'm going to move on to my third panel. So I decided that I didn't want that last plane to have dimension. I just glued it flat and then did the little heart exhaust, which is just so cute. So I'm going to put my sandcastle, my sand bucket, and my crab down. The sandcastle I am going to give it some dimension just because that bucket was sitting behind it. And with my sandcastle, I forgot to mention this, instead of coloring it with Copics, I wanted it to match the sand because that's what it's made from. So I used the walnut distress ink and then I sprayed it, the oxide, and then I sprayed it. going to put my little crab down. He's one of my favorites from the Life's a Beach set. I just love him. Okay, so I think I've got it done and then, oops, I realize I have a little shark fin there. So I've got to add it into my third panel. Those things are just so cute. This is actually the first time I've used the donut set as well. Just love those little shark fins sticking out of the water. So there you have it. So we've got everything combined. You open it up and it's this beautiful scene card. So of course I'm going to go back in with my Wink of Stella. We need to give it some shimmer and my glossy accents. 
and go over it with some glossy accents just to give it that little bit of extra. The sandcastle especially because I used the distress ink on it, it was kind of flat looking a little bit. So I knew I wanted to put glossy accents on it. I tend to sometimes go overboard with the glossy accents and I was really careful. I did put the Wink of Stella on a lot, um, but I, I used the glossy accents pretty sparingly. I put it on the kite, I put it on the propeller and the some small areas of the plane, and I put it on the sandcastle. And I believe that's it. Oh, I put it on the heart exhaust. I did do that. And everything else just has Wink of Stella. So I hope you can see that it, Honestly, if this was so easy to create. It was time consuming. Um, and a lot of that was just because of the coloring. That's what took so long because there's so many elements to this. Um, the coloring and the die cutting really took the most time. But I think it's worth it. It's something so different. And, you know, giving this to somebody and them opening it up and seeing the full scene, especially I just, those clouds I think came out gorgeous. I just love the way the clouds came out. And it just, it's so sunny and warm and I, it's just something different. So I encourage you to try it. I was a little intimidated when I watched her video, um, but I thought, you know what, let's just give it a try. And it really was easy. I'm really excited to try some more of these in the future. Um, doing some Christmas ones, maybe some fall cards. There's so many things that you can do with these. And the great thing is, is I've used five stamp sets and a die set. And I actually had the Lawn Fawns, one of their sons that I was going to um, die cut and put up in the sky. But I decided the sky was a little busy with the two planes and the kite, so I left it out. But, you know, you could add stitch clouds in there. Um, there are some sets that have the clouds you can put the little faces on. So there's all kinds of stuff you can do with this card. And you can do this with other stamp sets, you know, not just Lawn Fawn. Um, if there's other stamp companies that you have a, a lot of their stamp sets and you can kind of see where they could work together. It's just a great way to use a lot of the products. You know, we spend so much money on these adorable stamps and it's so great to be able to have a place to use them all in one. So there you go. There is our little scene. We've got our two starry sky guys looking up at the plane. The little one flying the kite from Yay Kites. And then we've got our sand castle and our craft from Life's a Beach. And the planes from Plain and Simple. Love this card. So easy to do. If you learn something, you like it, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Have a great day.